I have a very important question. About eight inches. <laughs> hey YouTube. Um yeah. Let's I know you, Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know the comments I'm gonna get, but I know I promised that my next upload would be um drawing your profile pictures. But I ran into a small problem. This is Sam Alvey, a former UFC fighter and MFC middleweight champion, and today, I got to interview him. <sighs> One day, I thought it'd be funny to send him a couple of cat pictures, and boy, did I send many. <laughs> After months of spamming cat memes to a former UFC welterweight, I somehow managed to convince him to take the time out of his day to be interviewed by little old me. So I want to give a huge, and I mean huge shout out to um, Sam Alley for being nice enough to do something like this for his fans. So with that being said, please enjoy the interview. Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Tiger Yo Interviews. In this first episode, I'm here with former UFC fighter, Sam Alvey. Hey, how's it going, my friend? Yeah, so in case the three people watching this video don't know you because they're incompetent losers who live under a rock, can you tell us what you do for a living, why you do it, why my wife left me, and all that good stuff? Yeah, so I am a professional badass. I found a way to make money doing it. Uh, I was real good for a long time. Towards the end, I got a little less good. No, you know what? I got just as good. The rotten judges got worse. That's yeah, what it dude. was. <laughs> it wasn't me. It was them. Uh, somebody else's fault always. Uh, and so now I'm I'm just working on my next fight, living on a ranch, figuring out how to how to make ends meet uh, w without the UFC behind me. All right, so Sam, you're a cowboy, right? Uh. I, I prefer the Packers. So you're a bit of a born person. So you of all people living in this place we call Earth should know this. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Uh, you know, I read the there's like an actual reasoning behind it. I don't remember what the reasoning was, but there's like actual science behind what came first. So I, I got a 50-50 shot knowing one of them. I'm going to say the egg. The egg was first. What came before the egg, though? Uh, it was self-replicating eggs. That must must have been it. Anyways, I have a couple of questions about MMA. So Okay. I got I got more than a couple answers. All right, let's go. So before discovering MMA, did you have any other things you wanted to do? Uh yeah, I was a professional, well, uh, excuse me, semi professional. <laughs> I, sorry, my, my kid's playing with the turkey. The turkey. <laughs> yeah, my kid makes a noise and the turkey gobbles at it back. I, anyway, I was a prof a semi professional trumpet player. Uh meaning I never made any money but banded. Uh, so I enjoyed doing it. I like being part of it. I, I played trumpet for a lot of years. Uh, trumpet never paid me. Oh. Uh, yeah. So as soon as MMA said, hey, we'll give you 50 bucks in gas money. <laughs> I said, I'm in. And I was hooked uh, right off the bat. Right. So uh, throughout your you go, yeah, throughout your UFC career, you went to the Ultimate Fighter House in season 16. What was that experience like? Uh, it's very memorable, but it was also very boring. Uh, it, it was, I, I enjoyed doing it, but it was, uh, it was six weeks of being trapped in a house with a bunch of dudes that only want to talk about fighting. So it got very old, very fast. Is there a particular moment you would, um, take away from that experience? Yeah. When in doubt, if ever things aren't going your way in life, what you got to do is bang your head against the wall and yell, <laughs> let me bang, bro. Uh, and that will set up the rest of your future for, for nothing but positives. Wise words. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Julian Lane, was, he was the, our sensei. All right. So let's say I'm a 32-year-old alcoholic after a long day of pushing elderly people down the stairs, you know, as you do. And after a long shift at my local Wendy's, I meet you at a bar and you just happen to mention that you are a UFC fighter. 
If you had to brag about beating someone in your MMA run, who would you brag about beating? Well, that's a long setup. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I like it. Um, I, I, the one everybody knows is uh, Rashad Evans. He's, he's the biggest name I've ever beaten. Mm. But I've got a list of, of good people that I have fought that goes uh, that's a mile long. Uh, Nate Marquardt, Talis Latis. Alex Nicholson, uh, the, the list goes on. I've got over 80 fights, and I fought some of the best that I've ever fought. And I beat most of them. A couple of them got my number. Stupid Nogira. Uh, yeah. little, uh, but it was the referee's <laughs> fault. Again, not my fault. Never my fault. <laughs> but but that, that's kind of – Rashad Evans is the one everyone likes to hear about. Just in general, what's the best experience you've ever had in your MMA career? Uh, so I fought Gerald Mearshart the first time I was, it was for a state tournament. I beat him up for 24 minutes and with a minute to go, I got choked out. Uh, you know, I say, Oh, I can't believe that happened. I was winning. All I had to do is nothing. And I would have walked away the champ, uh, gotten a nice ring, gotten all sorts of stuff, but instead he got it. And so they handed him his ring. But while I was still in that cage, I dropped to a knee and I proposed to my wife with a way better ring. Ah, uh, okay. and that that was yep you know, and i had i it was pre-planned i had all i had so many friends and family at that event and i i gave all of them a lot of them a rose when i first met my wife i bought a rose at the renaissance fair and so i found the same rose dealer i said hey could you bring a bunch of roses and he said okay we bought a bunch of roses gave them to all of my friends and family who were sitting cage side and as I dropped to that knee, they threw the roses in over the top of the cage. Yo. So she she was proposed to with a hail of roses. Um, and it was just about as, as good a moment as I could have wished for. Dude, that's so sick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So out of your many, many fights, which one was the toughest in your opinion and why? Uh, Nate Marquardt was the toughest. Uh, he, he was my coach and the ultimate fighter. And so I got to fight my coach, and that added a little extra to, to the fight. Oh. Uh, but that boy hit me so hard, he gave me a concussion that didn't set in until a week later. What? Uh, <laughs> yeah, didn't I thought I was fine. Left a bunch of stuff at the airport and didn't realize it for a month. Uh, and then a week later was the Super Bowl, and I was sitting at my buddy's house watching the Super Bowl. I stood up to wrestle with his daughter, and immediately the world came crashing down on me. This was It was seven and a half days since I fought world crashed on him so oh, i kind of almost passed out into the chair just sat there as quietly as i could trying not to draw attention to myself i said oh well i'm dying now uh <laughs> i started googling what was it and apparently it's delayed onset concussion disorder syndrome or something i said oh all right so so he hit me so hard that i didn't feel it until a week later uh and so he, he was my toughest fight were you still smiling throughout that I, you know, I might have been. I don't know. If I was, it was like a simple Jack from uh, <laughs> Tropic Thunder. I didn't mean to be, but it was happening. Right. Considering you've traveled around the world, is there a specific location you like to fight most at? Uh, Mexico City, fa favorite place I ever fought. I got to fight there twice, fought Alex Nicholson and Rashad Evans there. Um, and I just love the people. I love the atmosphere. I loved every part of that trip, both trips. Hold on, I'm, I'm getting a call. Hold on. Oh. Give me one second. Okay. Hello? Dude. What do, you, what do you mean you crashed into a crocodile pit? What am I supposed to do about that? No, no, dude, I'm in the middle of an interview with Sam Alvey. Come on. You know better. Yeah, yeah, Sam Alvey. Wait, you want to... You want to ask him a question? You want to ask him something? Hold on. Hey, Sam. Uh, can he ask you a question? Yeah, I, w I would love. I would love to help. My drunk driving uncle asked what type of beer you should get. And what would you do if you just crash into a crocodile pit? Cause that's All the right. So it happens to me about once a month. What you got to uh, do is if the crocodile bites you, you got to latch onto its head because it's going to try and roll you. And if it rolls you successfully, you're in a bad spot. Oh, but if you can like shoot. rear naked choke that croc, It'll still have your arm or leg or whatever it's biting, but it won't be able to tear it off. So that's to do with that. As far as for what beer he's supposed to be drinking, uh, I tell you what, if he's drunk driving, crashing the alligator pits, he seems like the type of guy that would drink Budweiser. So, uh, yeah, go, go keep drinking your Budweiser, buddy. He said he should stick to water, man. I'm going to call you later, man. All right. <laughs> Right. Hey, thanks for that, Budweiser Bud right. and water, they're about the same thing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Um, what was your biggest inspiration or role model for starting MMA? Uh, I had nothing for starting MMA. I mean, if, if I was honest, it'd be like Jackie Chan and the Ninja Turtles. That was, that was all I ever knew about fighting. Uh, it wasn't until years later that I learned there were people that, that could slaughter me. Yeah. Well, um, my inspiration for starting Muay Thai was always Spider-Man. So can't go wrong with that. Yeah, Ninja Turtles and Spider-Man. Uh, what's your dream MMA opponent from any era? Michael Bisping. I always wanted to fight him. I mean, he was he was leagues ahead of me, so it never never happened while we were in the UFC together. But uh, I, to this day, it would have been it would have been a fight I, I absolutely loved. All right, and All right. where did your nickname Smile and Sam Alvey originate from? I think it was my dad that called me at first. I remember we were sitting around the the kitchen table kitchen table, and the Grin Reaper was mentioned. We had a couple mentions. No. I gave him and. Uh, my dad said, "Smiling Sam, how about that?" Ooh, I like that. It was from that era where everything—if it was extreme—it was just an X. So I said, "It can't be smiling; it has to be apostrophe capital N." Smiling Sam, and that's what we went with. It was before social media. Had social media been around, I would have gone with smiling. It's way easier to spell and remember. True. But uh, yeah, it was a good name, all the same. Just uh, another question on top of that: Where did your butterfly celebration pose originate from? Yeah, me and a buddy, uh, Evan Myers, uh, we used to be neighbors-ish. We lived, I don't know, a mile away from each other or so. And kind of in the middle of us, there was this uh, private pond that had a raft that, that floated in the middle that just all the kids from wherever came and swam on. We probably weren't supposed to, but we did anyways. Mm-hmm. And we'd always have the raft fights, and you'd go, oh, WWE is the greatest sport that's ever been. Uh, and so we'd all pick our tag team. Who right? and my buddy and I? Well, what's the name of your tag team? He said, "Well, we're the Raging Butterflies." We came up with. And so from that point on, we were the Raging Butterflies for everything: dodgeball, basketball, paintball, uh, you name it. And we did it. We came up with the hand signal and everything. So since that point, I said, "Listen, I will build an army. We will have the Raging Butterfly Army someday." He said, "No, you won't." And I got pretty close. Had I gotten the, if I if ever got to that belt, and I'll still get to a belt. But if I ever got to that UFC belt, I would be. I would be the UFC uh, <laughs> a champion. What's your favorite cheat meal after a fight? Um, big fan of meth. I mean, uh, pizza. <laughs> uh, yeah, Same, I, man. Uh, no, I, cereal is the real answer. I I eat pizza throughout my camps. I'm real, you know, I, I know when to eat, how to eat, what mm-hmm. to eat. So I, I'm careful with that. But then I get to... Uh, after I, I stay away from cereal, there's just nothing good in cereal except the flavor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't touch that. But as soon as I'm done fighting, I eat all the cereal, everything, uh, and none <laughs> of the knockoff brands. I don't go like fruit circles or fruit rings. Come on, fruit, man. The knockoffs are so much better, bro. They are not. They get Dude. soggy too fast. They get soggy. You have a bigger quantity, though. The qua- quantity. You got a bigger bro, quantity, though. I just want to I can last you for I a just- month. <laughs> I'm an MMA fighter. Every time I win, I have dozens and dozens of dollars I can spend. And I spend that on the high brand, straight off the, sh- you know, the Kellogg's brand cereal. Nah, all my homies say Kellogg's, man. All right. uh, they they got to win. They got to win those, those big fights for the Kellogg's money. Yeah. So what's your favorite walkout song? I hate Soul Sister, but Train. I've been walking out to that song for years. I mean, close to 12 years now. So what goes through your head when you make your walk to the octagon? Uh, usually it's, hey, 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 tonight. That's usually what's going on. So that that goes through your head before battle. Yeah, yeah, I'm walking True. out just grooving it. I, I, love, I only listen to that song when I'm walking out. I won't listen to the song any other time. Uh, and, I, and I love the song. So whenever it's on, I groove to it. And the only time it's on is when I'm walking on the cage. All right. Um, do you have any plans to return to the UFC soon? Or are you going to stick to regionals for right now? Uh, I have all the plans in the world to get back to the UFC. I will be there. I will be their champion. Izzy, I'm coming for you. Uh-oh. Yeah, he's in <laughs> trouble now. He, he knows it. He knows it. Maybe I'll go up <laughs> to heavyweight and fight Jones. Jones is, Jones is ducking me. He saw I went up to 205. Right? So he jumped A- everyone's stuck in Sam Alvey nowadays. That's what it is. I, you know... Francis Nagano has been awfully silent since yeah. that, that challenge. Man, he doesn't want to end up like Cameron, huh? <laughs> and he knows that's what would happen. Yep. All right. So what are your thoughts on Mark Zuckerberg versus Elon Musk possibly having a fight? 
and I have, I love the idea. You, most people don't realize that back when this country had like real men back in the 1800s when babies didn't make it past three for the most part, real men were out there. And the smartest men in the world, people smarter than we have today, were, were leading this country into nothing but greatness. And they still fought on the sideline. They slapped each other. They, they dueled each other. They, they you know, threw fist to cuffs, whole nine yards. And uh, that then – They've gotten soft. The rich and powerful have gotten soft. True. So the two of our richest and most powerful want to step in that cage and see who's the best. That is nothing but I take my hats off to him. I hope Bezos gets the winner. So you're going Bezos, huh? Uh, I'm taking Musk all day. I think Musk wins. Uh, but I'm hoping Bezos wants to get in on it. I know the UFC doesn't like gimmick fights, but considering they made the BMF <laughs> they title. They do too. Um, <laughs> they brought in Hasbula, added him to the UFC video game. Um, do you think <laughs> I didn't know that <laughs> they did, man? <laughs> do you think it's a possibility we might see him in the UFC? No, there's no chance. There's no chance. Yeah, you got to believe, yeah, man. Nobody's ever died in the octagon before, and they would not stick Hezbollah on us. <laughs> uh, Francis nagano has gone, and Francis was the only one that stood a chance. Moving on to wrestling, um, are you still in- interested in pro wrestling now that the, you uh, now that the UFC and WWE are merged? I would sell any three of my children if I could get into the WWE. That's what it cost cost me to do it. By the way, I'm joking about that. I wouldn't sell any of them. <laughs> I would, it'd be more of a barter system kind of thing. It'd be like a trade. Uh, no, it is. It has been my dream since the youngest of Smile and Sam's, uh, since the earliest of my smiles, uh, to to step into that octagon or into that uh, the the squared circle, as nobody calls it. Uh, and be, become one of the, the greatest WWE champions that's ever been. All right, but who would you sell? Uh, they're all around me. I can't talk about it right now. Don't worry, Reagan. You're safe. <laughs> all right. Um, when you eventually turn heel, which is something like every pro wrestler does, right? What would your gimmick, they all, what would your gimmick they, be? I would keep the exact same thing I do where I'd smile a lot. It would just be the timing of my smiles uh, would, would be different. Like if you say something nice and smile, that's something. But if you say something mean and then smile, that means something completely different. So you're going to have an evil grin. Smile. The timing would be different. Oh. Yeah. People are like, that's son of a bitch. <laughs> you smile as soon as they leave. That's, that's how you know they're a bad guy. What would you name your finisher? Uh, oh, it's the Pillars of Samson. What? Oh, yeah. You throw the ginger hook. Ginger hook sets it up, <laughs> followed by the Pillars of Samson. All right. Um, if you could wrestle in any WWE event, apart from WrestleMania, because that's, like, obviously the best answer, which would it be? Uh, Royal Rumble. I think, I think Royal <laughs> Rumble is the, the best answer, because people, be, people get that title at WrestleMania, but only a few people win that Royal Rumble, and I, mm. I, I, I'm going to win it. All right, so current or old um, favorite WWE wrestler? Uh, Chris Jericho is my all-time favorite. Uh, always been a fan. I just he, he was so blatantly obnoxious with everything <laughs> he said, and he was just good on the mic. I really enjoyed Chris Jericho. Then, of course, you got Stone Cold and The Rock and all that, but Chris Jericho, I, I always enjoyed him. Who would be your dream WWE opponent from any era? Would it be Jericho? No, no, no. I'd take Sheamus. There can be only one ginger in the UFC. True. Where we're kind of like Highlanders. <laughs> uh, this is just a general question. Uh, how far do you estimate your WWE debut is from now? Uh, within, it'll be under 13 months. Let's go. All right. Um, this is a, this is a, a Jake Paul question. Oh, oh, all right. right. So you mentioned on the MMA hour that you actually met Jake and Logan Paul and that you broke Logan Paul's jaw leading to you never being invited to your gym again. And after beating Cameron Graham at B2 fighting series, you called out Jake Paul. Is that a fight you're still chasing or is it just in the back of your mind for now? Uh, Now, to be fair, I've never called out a slouch before uh, until I called out Jake Paul. And it, it is an easy fight. That is why every MMA fighter wants it. Uh, and that's why he gets to pick who gets it, because he is the name. 
We are the people that can beat him. He will only call out the people he thinks he has a chance against. He did surprise me with Anderson Silva, but yeah. Anderson Silva is a 50 year old man. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I still thought Silva was going to get it, and I was wrong. It was my mistake. But it, it, it is what it is. Yeah, I could have sworn he had it too. <laughs> I thought he was, I, I was very yeah. vocal about how I thought Silva was going to outstrike him, but no, I, I was wrong. Uh, do you have any advice for up and coming? fighters you want to give um if you're gonna fight somebody tough get paid for it do not fight somebody tough if they don't pay for it and now i'm going to say that to all the fighters and it is going to go in one ear and out the other ear but that is the rule do not fight somebody tough unless they pay you to fight somebody tough you're talking based on experience right oh yeah 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 (laughs) almost every fight you see somebody is supposed to win uh, and if that's supposed to isn't you, don't touch it. But what if I watched like all the Rocky films and I? That is I a can... good start. <laughs> I actually, I start every camp watching the uh, the Star Wars. What would it be? The Septology. The what's what's nine? Not Nineology. The uh, Octology. No, I, uh... <laughs> I watch all the Star Wars at the beginning of camp. Just make sure the the Force is good and strong in me. Well, what's your favorite Star Wars movie? Oh, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's got to be the same answer for everybody. Otherwise, they're all wrong. It's uh, episode four. Uh, excuse me, episode five. Sure. Empire. Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back. Let's go. Um, so I'm about to wrap it up. But before I do that, I have a very important question. About eight inches. You were to choose. Oh, between... that's not the question. Oh, oh my but... <laughs> If you were to choose. <laughs> if you <laughs> <laughs> you were to choose between two names to give an alligator plush, would you name him something cool and awesome like Willie or something dumb and stupid like Seven? It's Willie all day. You don't name something a number. Right? Numbers are numbers. Things are, you know, worth naming. I'm glad to have finally got someone who thinks alike. I, common sense is what I'm common rocking sense. here today. All right. So, um,. Any final things you'd like to say before ending this video? Uh, hey, everyone watching, the millions and millions of people that have tuned in to listen to this amazing interview, you need to follow my YouTube. I'm growing it. It is growing. It is. I'm able to share the stories of my over 80 fights and shoot just about two decades of experience in MMA. And I've done more than any fighter ever will do again. Uh, and I'm just spreading the love, sharing some tips, sharing, uh, sharing some interesting stories and and answer on as many questions as I can. So tune in, smile and Sam on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and all that. That is the nice thing about the way I spell my name. You know, spelling it wrong. Nobody stole my my ads. So at smile and Sam on YouTube, check it out. It's worth it, I promise you. And I appreciate each and every one of you that that watch a video or two. All right, you heard the man, guys. Uh, be sure to check out his uh, social media. Uh, if you have any interest that you have any interest in MMA. Uh, he's your guy. So, yeah. All right. So that'll do it for today's episode of Tiger Yo Interviews. Till next time, everybody. Peace out. Take care. Well, it's official. <laughs>